You know I'm reminded of the old chassid or the kerushim. As they were gathering their little simple and formal events and activities, coupled with ignorance beyond one's ability to comprehend their lack of wisdom of Torah. Yet in the midst of all of that, there was a sincere desire and passion to seek the counsel of the Most High, that they would understand all that He commands and all that He instructed them in. And the reason for that is that the living power of his testimony may have substance in his nation, his people. And that nations, the Ghaim, those that were heathens, without the knowledge of Almighty Yah, just the riches of their wisdom, would speak in such a profound way that men would be drawn to listen. To hear that they may comprehend the depth of this great one. Although to them he is somewhat of a mythology of a mystic form of quote a God unquote. But yet in the bosom of Yisrael he is real. And the dynamics of his reality is the mind of Yoshua HaMashiach. We allow every kind of damnable mindset to take roots in us. And because of that, there is no richness of his power in the beauty of what expression that the Torah express. It is beyond the comprehension of the mind of man to digest, to cipher, and to interpret Torah. Only Yah can do that. Only Yah can reveal or He can uncover. He uses the words gala to uncover, to make known, to make known the hidden things that are beyond the peripheral or the eye to see and to understand by some learned experience. It doesn't come that way. It takes a gift from the Most High for a man to extrapolate on the dynamics of Torah. It doesn't come by one reading because the philosophers would master the concept of Torah wisdom. So you know it's not by that nature. It must be uncovered to the man. He must speak as an orica. His voice must emanate the power of that wisdom because he lives it. His life is enraptured in that wisdom. You see the beauty of his life, the strength of his life. And of course we have not gotten to that place. When a man has that kind of, or those amenities of Yah, he would always set him in the midst of wise zakhain, or elders, that are wise. And I say it with my sad disapproval, hell, you can't hardly find a zakhain today. And what a damn shame. What a damn shame. You find immature silly men, but not a zakhim. I'm going to preach and teach. I have no formal construction of the way I will go this morning, although I did, sir. And of course, that is always altered at the last moment. There's something that always piqued my cue. And when that happens, then the whole message may go array. 
It may go in a different direction. And so I have learned over these many years not to plan out anything. As they would say, just go with the flow of the ruach. The ruach. The life. The power. Yah. Almighty Yahweh. He is ruach. And you have no substance of life at all without ruach. It is the breath of his life. It is the breath, it is the vapor that the nostrils of Almighty Yahweh breathe forth upon man. It is the contents of his living life, his chayil, the strength of his power that we can battle or opposition of hell, that we are strong. We have his koach. His koach is the strength and wisdom of Torah. When a man walks strong, you know a strong man from a weak man. You can tell when a man has not the strength of your eye can. You see, I don't back down. I'm not one that play. I've never been false all of my life. I've never been forced. I was talking to my Ach Yusipia yesterday. I said, you know, there are those that I've met along this way as walking with Yah, that if I was in the world, I would never deal with them. They would never be a part of my inner circle. I wouldn't even talk to them. I would not even do that. And that's the truth. They would not be a part of my social agenda. I would have nothing to do with them. And that's the truth. Now, I've never said I was one of a kind. Yoshua is one of a kind. And I certainly will not obfuscate or renounce my responsibilities in this Torah knowledge to anyone. Not for $10 million. And by the way, no one is going to give me $10 million. No more than they're going to give you $10 million. And so no one is going to give you monies to change your attitude, uh, your personality. You can forget that. No one is going to do that. So I can say that with extreme because I do not expect someone even to offer me $500 to do that. All I'm saying to us that when it is real and genuine, all will know. When one is sincere, I'm not like one to rape the daughters of Tizayon. I will never rape them. I will never take their funds. There are men that have raped them. Not only mentally, spiritually, but as well as physically. Take advantage of them. Tell them you do this because, quote, God wants you to do it, unquote. Yah wants me to have you. they are those that think they know Yah, and they do the people that way. I, I want to touch on this briefly. There is this most damnable, deceitful doctrine and teachings and they come forth out of the bosom of ignorant men that do not know Torah. They have not labored to understand Torah. And so they speak off the cups. They hear someone say something and they take that and run. So the same person wrote in this letter. I want to address this for a few moments. It must be addressed. She tells me that the person that is leading her, she says, I am encouraged, parentheses, challenge, to re-examine where or this concept of Yoshua HaMashiach. It is amazing of the ignorance of this damnable generation. 
Did they buy the concepts of other men that have written books uh, and they believe the damn lies? Yet they have no ability uh, to cleanse themselves. Yah's commands are still the same. His zabak, his sacrificial offerings are, are still in place. And nothing has changed. He is the same today. He is the same yesterday. And he is the same forevermore. That's why we the sons of Jacob. We have not been consumed because of our wickedness. So you must re-examine the concept of your Yeshua. She says, I must re-examine where your Yeshua is in, quote, the Bible. It was said that the prophets did not speak of his coming. And the New Testament is hugely believed and inspired by, she talks about the Mar. Koranites, a people that were Christian Nazis, or they had this narcissism. You understand what narcissism is? It is one that thinks that their intellectual learning, uh, they're shrewd, and they, and they have the ability to understand all concepts of life. And so you read a damnable book like that, and the concepts of damn fools uh, and these are the people that will call those that are not of their hue skin color the sons of Esav. And yet they buy the damnable lies. So I have to re-examine the concept of Yahshua, you may. But I will never examine that. I will re-examine the content of my heart. And to make sure that it is in the principles or established by the principles of Yah, but I will never renounce him because uh, if you think you have the Abad, you have not the son, uh, you're a flat out liar. And all the prophets spoke of him. Uh, they spoke of the power of the fruition of this living Torah that this damn wicked mindset of Israel could never comprehend. Yeah. Oh, I will fuss. Yeah. And I will raise hell as well. I will cause the gates of hell to be raised up. So this is what has strengthened your determination that Yahshua, the Machonites, these damn heathens of the 7th century, that there was a debating between them or a sect that removed itself from what? One called Christianity, and they come up with this thesis of doctrine, and that is what one's heart is impressed about. It's because many are laden with sin and they're silly. And there are those that the Torah call, talks about silly women, that they're laden with sin. They're easily deceived. They are drawn by the captivation of the subtleties and the darkness of the mind of the wicked one. It is the spirit of Nahash. When a man, when one is double-minded, they are unstable in all their ways. You can tell them uh, any damn thing and they will buy. And you wonder why the condition of his people uh, are in the state that it is. Damn what they said. These are heathens that don't even know the power and revelation of Torah. The Torah has not even been revealed, uncovered unto them. It's not uncovered unto every man. That's why they speak with philosophy of doctrines that they have created. And that's why you get a group of five together. They all got a different concept of what the revelation of that truth is. We must be of the same mind of Yah and Yorkshire, the mind of a living Torah. That's the mind of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. There is no private interpretation of Torah, it is revealed. Yeah. The Torah of Yah was not spoken unto Ben Yisrael, it was revealed unto the prophet Moshe. Yeah. Yeah. 
and it revealed the contents of that unto a nation. It was in the bosom of Moshe. It was written and scribed in his heart. And yet the people that he granted it to when he came down to give it unto them, they had gone far from Yah. They had built their damnable calves, their gods. Raised them up to say, this is what brought us out of the bondage of Misraim. Unto the anger of Yah, that the tablets were thrown down upon that damnable wicked generation. And the first spirit that Yah caused to enter their hearts, it was Nahash. That's why the serpents were put on the pole and every man and everyone that looked up to identify the Nahash, the uncleanness of the wickedness in their hearts, they lived. And the ones that were consumed with their Nahash, they died. So damn the Mahonanites. And all of these damnable false priesthoods that have not come by the way of Levi, who labor in the Torah to bring wisdom of Torah, who Yah had given the seal of approval. They will bring forth the revelation of the Torah, the commands, the instructions, the ordinance, the pikuts, the hukmah of Omari Yahweh. We got this most damnable, silly, ignorant mindset today. And they take what they want out of the book and then they omit everything else. These same dirty bastards will talk about having two or three wives uh, and they lay on their lazy arse all day watching television uh, and don't do a damn thing and put what they call a wife. Uh, put them out to work. And the women are so damn silly and so full of loss uh, and they are so full of ignorance. Uh, it was not the man that was deceived but it was the woman that was deceived. Uh. That's why she must know a strong man. And there's nothing more profound than the strength of a husband. Not a damn weak man or jellyback. Not an effeminate man. I'm talking about a man. And everyone is not a man. I don't care if they have the similitude of a man. It doesn't mean that they are men. No physicality of strength, nurturing of Torah. I'll get to what I'm going to teach. And if I don't, it's all tongue. It will feed your belly. She says, I want to mention that I indeed search your site for teachings on the end times preparedness. I was wondering if you considered at all fleeing Babel or Babylon to be literal, meaning to leave physical or the physicality of America aside, yes, always striving to keep oneself set apart from the world affairs and values of this lifestyle. So this is what men are teaching and telling the people. I want to touch on that for a moment. I will see what Torah says. These are wicked men. So this individual asks me that. First of all, I don't have two pennies to rub together. I have no financial wealth. And the wickedness in that land is just as great and corrupt as this damn land. You understand? The vile imposters there. And these individuals think that they are suffering racism here. Wait till they go to that land. The segregation. The balkanizing. And yet the question is asked. The question is asked. Should I leave this country? Well, if I wanted to leave today, I don't have a dime to leave. 
to live in the smallest of shacks in a land like that will cost you two, three thousand dollars a month. Unless there is some kinds of uh, uh, subsidies of that government uh, that wants you there for one purpose. One that is always me, he cannot serve in the military. I want to impose for a moment. I received a call the other day and the individual said, I was told about you all. So I'm calling to discuss things with whomever I can. So I said to the individual, well, who told you about us? He said, a person gave me your telephone number, gave me your website, and gave me information about you all and said to me, you must seek out this man and the teachings there. I said, I understand, sir, but I inquire or I request of you, who told you of us? Where are you calling from? And who was the person that told you about this communal construct? He said, my son. I said, all right. He said, my son lives in the land of Israel. My son, he is in the military of that land. He's a man of the darker hue. He said, I married a Jewish woman. And so in our separation, she moved my son and she went to the land that we call Israel. And so he has dual citizenships in America and in the land of Israel. Well, he is young. He said he is in the military. And he fights for the Israel army to oppress, to suppress, to rob, to steal, to pillage, and a system that is worse than apartheid. You are commanded the true Israelites, you do not oppress strangers. He said, I don't want you to oppress the gear because you were strangers uh, in the line. You don't abuse them. Uh, you don't treat them like dogs. I don't give a damn who they are. Yoshua refines that through the etiquette of Shaul. Uh, as much as we have opportunity, let us do time unto all men, uh, but especially uh, the nation. Uh, the house of Yisrael, yeah, we must do. Exceptional by them. That's what Yah commands. So he tells me his son is in the military. That is one nation of all nations that come to our website. I'm able to identify the nations. But for some reason it shows me no one ever comes to our site from that strip of land. But yet I've heard from those that are living in that land. They have called, they have emailed me to let me know that they have seen the works of Yah here. So the question is asked, do I flee Bavel? Do I go to the land of Israel? You call Israel. Do I sell my earthly goods will I have none to sell can you imagine to oppress the mother's mind there in New York City that has four babies and she is not even barely making it and you tell her to go to a land on the strength of the verbiage of a man's interpretation that has no relevance at all to her and she watched her babies as she fins. Not only that, what about the poor mother that's a true Hebrew, born of the rights of Israel there in India or in Pakistan? What about the one that is in Bosnia? Or the one that is in the Baltic of Russia? 
Or the one that is in Kenya or what about Guyana or Ghana? How do you tell one that is poor? That has no substance. This must be done by the hand of Yah. Just like the birth of Yahshua was done by a miraculous power of Yah's hand, so is the restoration of his house and his nation. He's not leaving that into my hand to bring them or to restore them unto the promises of Abraham. This is the damn stupidity of this world today. I'm going to break it down a little bit. I'm going to break it down a little bit. Don't worry. And so does that mean literally fleeing Bevel? Well, let me ask you a question. What is the difference between this nation and that land we call Israel? The faggots run rapidly. One of the greatest, what they call the largest gay pride day in the world. It is consumed, as Yaka Han said, the city of Sodom and Egypt. It is the city of Yerushalayim, the city of the Coptic of the gods. Every kind of damnable vile spirit, every kind of corruption, every kind of vile unclean thing, everything that is impure is perpetrated in that little strip of land, that little place. Every kind of violent deed, every kind of violent act, the priests and the orthodoxy rape and the pedophilia among the damn nation. Damn America! Damn that place we call Israel for the misfits and the liars. Yah is going to clean his city. And just like Bevel is the city, so is Jerusalem. He's going to cleanse this city. He's going to restore. We are that city that sit in the parameters of the borders of the Iraq, the world, the expanse of the world. We are the light of Torah. The Torah is the light, a lamp unto our feet. And the light must resonate from us. So how do you tell a poor mother there in Georgia that's on welfare assistance? You think that that little strip of land is going to bring you folks over there in the dark hue of skin color and going to put you on a system to take care of you? You are silly. So it has to be an alternative that is greater than one, one can speak. These same men that are telling people to flee, they're still in this country. The ones that are over there, they have couriers coming back and forward for one thing. Can I tell you? For some damn money. And they draw from the simple to ones here in this wicked nation for one damn thing, money. For money. So the enterprises are not in that land, it's in this land. For one damn thing, and that's money. And yet this individual, how that these men play on their simplicity and their ignorance, and utilize them. There's one community there in the Mona that they have shops in Atlanta, they have Businesses in D.C., this is their revenue source, how they make money. The men come and marry the women, and the women go out to work. They deny Yoshua HaMashiach. The men marry three, four wives, and the older men do not want young women, old women, they want young women. So you all the ones, you're out. You're not getting a husband. They want the young tender ones and the ones uh, that their damnable twisted minds that are so vile and so polluted, that's what they want. Uh, they want the Beth Ula. They don't want the young men to have them. Uh, these damn dirty bastards, these wicked dogs uh, to play out their fantasies. Uh, the problem, they've never dealt with a woman. They've never had a woman. They've never had an insure. And so they're not satisfied. What do you tell the poor mother that's in Mississippi in the Delta, that's living on the clay earth, that, as Granny would say, quote, doesn't have a pot 
to urinate or to piss in, or a window to throw it out, unquote. The proverbial proverb to say she doesn't have a dime. She has six children. And so you tell her, get out of this country. How does she get there? Tell me. To take her and her babies to a land like that, it will cost uh, the least expensive way, about $8,000. How does she get there? Well, she doesn't have $80 in her bank account. I'm laying down that parameter because I'm going to talk on some things, all right? So do I physically get out of Babel? Do I remove myself because I go to that little strip called Israel? You think I'm going to remove myself from corruption and wickedness? I remember, could I say this? I remember when I said when I was making $2.65 an hour, I said when I make $5 an hour, everything is going to be well. I said when I make $10 an hour, $15 an hour, when I make the money is $20 an hour, could I have that kind of access or access to that kind of money, then it was going to be well. Well, it was never well. It was never well. Because when you make 10, you want a 50. When you make 50, you want 20. When you make 20, you want 22. 50 an hour. You make 22, 50, you want 30 an hour. And so nothing ever worked out. So you tell me that those of the diaspora, what if they all have the money to go to that land? You think that even the economy could, uh, to, to, could even uh, assume that uh, kind of people? You think the infrastructure, their waste and their urine uh, and cars, you think that it could handle that? This is a silly generation. It is a stupid generation. It doesn't take much. If I wanted to be a wealthy, fat, rich man, I could. You can play on the people very easily. Yeah. I won't do the people of Yah that way. Yeah. I tell you to come out of this mindset, come out of the rituals of this nation and all nations. Then how do we get to the land? Can I show you a simple process? How we're going to get there? I can only answer this question by Torah. I cannot answer it any other way. There are things that Yah has put in his own hands. He did not allow the Melachim or the Melak to come in the stead of his own heart and his purpose. He allowed the Dabarim, the promises unto Abraham. The offerings of Yah, they must be complied with. We must offer up unto him what he commands. And yet he brought the refining of that out in the living power of Yahshua HaMashiach. That through that power and that anointing, uh, we can do all things. Uh, according to what? According to Torah. Not you becoming a millionaire. Not you driving a Cadillac. Not you getting the job you want. Uh, we can do call all, all things concerning the Torah and the command unto live the house of Yisrael. He has put, he has scattered us. Now I'm going to answer this question with the question of the reading of Torah. I want to read this. It says in the book of Yeshaya, Isaiah. Isaiah. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 11. This is a Nabua. A Nabua. This is a prophecy of time and that which shall be. And there's one thing about a Nabua, a Nabua, it is specific with preciseness it is not some kind of superficial utterance that has no precise specifics to it and the messenger of Yah speaks by the command of Almighty Yah to write to chronicle for us for our assurance 
Yisra'ya in the midst of their great delusion of wickedness. And the messenger speaks by the mouth of Yah. Hear this in Yeshaya, chapter 11, verse 11. He talks about that day, the day of Yah. He says, and it shall come to pass in that day. He identifies the one. He is the sovereign almighty Yah, our Abba, shall set his hand. Hear me again. The second time to Ghana to recover. Do you understand he is going to recover? He has set his hand one time. But the second time, he is going to Kana. You all don't recall that subject? Kana. And no man will be able to buy or sell unless one has the mark of the Tani, the beast. And so Yah is going to buy. He's going to purchase. He's going to possess. He is going to Hana. He's going to get his nation. He's going to acquire them. He's going to buy them. He's going to possess them because the price has been paid in full. What the blood of the bullock could not do, the blood of your sure can. What the blood of the sprinkling of the ashes of the heaven could not cleanse us. The dome of Yahshua HaMashiach can. He's going to recover us. Who? He talks about the remnant. He talks about the Shea, the Shebat, the small residue of the house. He is going to recover specifically the remnant of his people, of his election, of his bochir, his elect. Now, each one of these nations represents a specific of the condition of his people. He tells us, which shall be lafa, they shall be sha'a, they shall survive, they will be alive, which shall be left. They're going to come from Ashur, from Assyria. They're going to come from the place Ashur or Ashur. It implies the questions of, or the question that resonate with Ashur is what it is defined by. But it's defined by truly the place of success. And that's all you hear in this nation, don't you? You are full of success. You have success. This is a successful people. Well, I'm successful. I have my own business. And I'm an entrepreneur. And you're running a nickel dime store in one simple location. You are simply a proprietor. You have a small business. You're not an entrepreneur because you're not investing in the broad range of businesses. You have a few dimes, a few thousand dollars, so don't allow these concepts of these damn twisted words to blind your eyes. So, oh, I'm my own entrepreneur, and you run a damn bologna shop down the street? Just say you got a small cafe. Just say I'm a soap maker. Oh, I'm an entrepreneur. And see how the words, how it generates this arrogance? of heathenistic martyrism from a people. And so that's what they say today. Oh, she is an entrepreneur. Hell, and she's cleaning houses? Just say I'm a cleaning lady. What's wrong with that? Just say I'm a maid. That's honorable. Huh? This is not going to be done by our strength. Huh? That's not one of us in here financially. It would take you working 10 years to amass just enough to maybe live in that land for two years. You're trying to subsist here. You're saving every dime to go there. You're not going to make it. One of the most expensive places in the world to rent. One of the most expensive places in the world to rent. 
You don't believe me? Go on the internet and shop, look for apartments in Yerushalayim and in Israel and see the price of them. I've done it too many times. And so these liars that are basking in the wealth of those poor individuals here, telling them to get up out of the land, and hell, they can't get up out of New York City. It takes every dime for them to live. And they don't have the law for each other whereby they join together, live with each other, and save every dime. You're not going to that country they call Israel and buy an acre of land for like three or four thousand dollars here. You're not going to do it. It's not going to happen. You may get somewhere out so far that there is no service, but you're not going to do it. Anywhere in the proximity of city, because the land is so small, what they call Israel. But we know where the land reaches. From the Nile to the great Euphrates. But in that little strip of land, you're not going to do it. It's just not going to happen. And so people are aroused at as though that that's going to make them complete in Yah. And they live wickedly here. They're going to live as wickedly there because everything becomes a superficial activity uh, that they think that they are right. And there are those that are living there that think that we are the damn heathens uh, and they got something that we don't have. You don't have a damn thing. Uh, you're full of your damn sins and your wickedness uh, and your ways are vile. You are corrupt uh, and you are a damn liar. You deny your Shua Hamashiach, you are a damn liar. Your house is cursed. And I don't take one word back. Listen to you. He says, uh, I will call them from the land of Ashur, the land of success. You got those in the islands that what the world calls success from Britain. You got them in Portugal. His people are scattered abroad. They're not just in the Americas. And these liars can create doctrine to facilitate their lies. They are scattered throughout the Erech. They are under the Olam, the creation of Omariya. And the word E-H-R-E-T-S, Erech, it implies throughout the four quarters of the wholeness to the extreme of the earth. He did not just take a seed and drop it in the Americas. He did not just take a seed, and it's amazing uh, that these individuals that call themselves Hebrew Israelites, uh, they don't identify, I don't give a damn if their skin is black as black, or those that are as creamy white as they come. Uh, it makes no difference. The doctrines are full of lies. And those of the dark hue, they are very adamant. They will not identify those that are in Africa or anywhere, any part of the world. They're not a part of the heritage. They're damn liars. They're flat out damn liars. Please, someone, y'all, get this message out. Tell someone to listen to it. Tell those Hebrews to listen to it. They can find me. Uh, they know where I'm at. I don't hide on the rock here. And when you come in, the first person you're going to generally meet is me. Because I'm sharp and I'm aware when anyone comes in. He says, he's going to those that shall be Sha'a, those that shall be left or alive from Ashur, the place or the mind of success. He says, and those from Mitzrayim, he calls Egypt, Mitzrayim. Those that are in the land, and the word Mitzrayim means Coptic or Copt. Those in the land of the gods and all of the spirituality. He says, and they're coming from Pathros. He says, and not only that, they're coming from Kush, from the black corners of the earth. I'm going to gather them. You see the four extremes uh, here where he's identifying uh, his people. You see these extremes. Uh, and not only that, he says they're going to come from Elam. Elam means eternity. They're going to come from places uh, that you didn't even know of. 
because they're scattered. And Yah says this for us. He says, and from Sinar, the country of the two rivers, it was a place near Babel where the rivers of waters flowed through that land. And we see the rivers of water flowing through this wicked nation, through this. And if you understand anything about numerology in Torah, the word two, it implies it is complete, whether it is right or whether it is wrong. That's what the number two implies. It is complete. It is fulfilled. Whether it is sadiq or whether it is evil, that's what it implies. I don't have time to really rehearse this. I don't rehearse messages. I just kind of grab the book and put something together for people to understand. Hallelujah. He says, and not only that from Hamath, and from the Isles, uh, I ask all of you, does it say Isle or Islands that is singular or plural? It says the Isles. The Isles of the Yam, of the sea, of the waters, of the distance. So there were those that would say that those that are the Aborigines in Australia, that they are not part of the Hebraic family. Yah says, I will gather them from the Isles of the sea. Listen. Those have been scattered to the isles. He did not say the isles of America, of Jamaica, of Barbados. He did not say that. He identified the collectiveness of all the isles of the sea. How does one tell one that is poor in Jamaica? How do you tell Yara to get over onto the land of Israel? And when that woman is doing all she can just to eat. Hell, she can eat. What it takes every bit of her living substance just to eat. What it takes all of her labor just to eat. When she must subjugate herself to conditions just to lay her head down. Just have a bed to lie down on. Just have a place to rest her head to bathe. It's not like she can bathe there like she bathed here. So what do you tell someone like that? That's poor. So what do we tell the whole Bernice Hawkins uh, that was poor with the house with the earth and forget to the land? No, you better get in your shoe, Hamashiach. Yeah. Because there's a day that's coming. Yeah. Yah's going to say, stand back, you heathens, you damn wicked nations. Yeah. You're going to know that there's been a mighty one among you. Yeah. They're not going to be transported by the means of their own ability. Yeah. This is something that is greater than that. And you're trying to identify the fullness of the house of Yisra'ya. You will say that, oh, you in Africa, you're not Yisra'ya. You in Russia, you're not Yisra'ya. You in Nigeria, you are not Yisra'ya. You in uh, the Philippines, you in Vietnamese, you're not of the house of Yisra'ya. You are flat out damn liars. They're liars. They're damn dogs. I don't take it back. Please, you all get this up today or tomorrow. I want the rebuttals from these immature individuals. I want someone, you all copy this and send it wherever you can. It's free. I want the Israelites to come against me. I said to one the other day, I said, if you ask most of them what a Hebrew is, or what does the word Ibra mean, I say 99% cannot tell you. If you ask those that declare that they're Hebrew, Yisraelites, what does the word, I know what the word Yisrael means. It means that they prevail or you have prevailed. That's why Yah changed his name from Yaakov, the supplanter, to, to, to Yisrael. It is not Israel, it's Israel, A-L-E. -E. And so folks will write me, uh, I'm going to ask you a question, how you get that Yisra'ya in that? That's so silly. We are prevailed by the testimony and the power of Yah. He calls us Hebrews. And the word Hebrew, the sons of Ibram, I-B-R-I-M, Ibram, means this. Those from beyond. Beyond the concept of man, Beyond the concept of man's wisdom, beyond the knowledge of the concept of what uh, uh, the identity of the house of Yisra'ya is, uh, 
So those from beyond, from beyond what the word Ibram or Hebrew means. Oh, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. I got this Caucasian group. Uh, they send me their mail every week, every two weeks. I throw the damn mess in the trash. And they know who I am. That's the sad part. Uh, they're wicked. All of them. They don't know you. He did not say I'm going to gather them from the Isles of Americas. South America. What about those in Canada? You don't even hear them mention those in Canada. He did not say that. It says in the 12th verse of this chapter. He says, And Almighty Yahweh, He shall nasa, He shall set. He's going to set up a nis, an ensign, a sign. He's going to set up a banner, a sign. For what? For the nations, the go in. And he shall asaf, he shall gather, he shall assemble. Who? The outcast, the dakan, those that have been pushed down and trodden under. Who? The outcast of Yisrael. He's going to gather them. He's going to set up a sign. Uh, and he's going to assemble. He is going to assaf. Uh, he's going to bring them by the mind of Yahshua. By the power of that testimony. And they're going to go just like that's why the wisdom of Shalom says consider the art. That has no leader. And they will all walk in the same direction. The halak will be the same. The derrick will be the same the way. And they will go. You see the ants, they have no commander standing there and say, go get that book, you go that way. They just go. Instinctively, they know which way to go. Instinctively, spiritually, uh, we're going to know where to assemble and gather ourselves uh, for the midnight train of Yasha. Go forth. Hallelujah. He's going to gather his nation. He's going to purge that damn wicked land there where faggots run it uh, and freaks are in charge, uh, where liars command uh, and thieves and Mafisono runs that land. Uh, same in this wicked country. He's going to be the one that assemble us. He's not leaving that up to me to assemble us. He's going to, that's why he's going to show us as great sign. I'm going to get to some stuff here, all right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He said that we, he's going to present a sign in Yeshai 11, 12. He's going to present a sign, he says, uh, not just to some nations, Yisrael. He says uh, that we shall be an infant or a niece or a niece uh, for the nations. And he shall asaf, he shall assemble the outcasts or, or the dacha, those that have been trodden down uh, and beaten by the labor of heavy burden. Uh, you tell me you look at the outcasts uh, on the continent of Africa and the Baltic where they are poor in some of the states of Russia and throughout the world uh, where the people don't even have bread to eat. His nation has been scattered abroad. He said, the outcast uh, of Yisrael. And he says, and I shall, uh, of Yisrael, and I shall gather, I shall kabach uh, together. The disperse uh, of Yehuda from the four corners of the earth. I'm going to gather them. This is my charge, my command. I'm going to bring them together in that one place. He is specific where he's going to bring us. And then, only then, we as a nation will understand the breadth and the circumference of Yerushalayim. Well, the Torah talks about the city of Yerushalayim coming down. It's 1,500 miles one way, 1,500 miles this way, 1,500 miles this way, and 1,500 miles that way. You can drive through that whole little land they call uh, Israel. You can drive from one end to the other within six hours. 
You're not driving 1,500 miles this way in six hours, 1,500 miles that way in six hours, 1,500 miles that way, 1,500 miles this way, from north to south, 1,500 miles. That's the city of Yerushalayim. It is going to accommodate the people of Yah. That little land will be overburdened. Where are the resources? Are? How are you going to grow enough food? This is the damn stupidity of the mindset of the silly people. They won't even work a garden here. You think they're going to work one there? You think a wife that is not subject to her husband here, she's going to be subject over there? You think your children, they don't get drugs there and do the same damn wicked stuff over there that they do here? I'm going to wait on you. I don't have a dime to get back. I'm not trying to work to amass money to, to acquire silver and gold to get back. I know what he's going to do. He has scattered Yisra'ya for a purpose. And when you scatter a seed, it is for it to produce. I say to the ark, I say to you, you're, you're safe. When we're working, I say, you're safe. You think that the leaves on these plants are simply just to draw the nutrients and the oxygen for, to keep it alive? I say, not so, my friend. That is one of the purposes. But it is to camouflage the fruit, to hide the seed. That plant doesn't look to produce okra over and over because uh, it, the lifespan or the, uh, or, the, uh, or the fruitfulness of the okra as it produced more began to diminish and lose its properties. You understand? So it grows leaves to hide the fruit uh, so that the fruit will dry. It will be dispersed by the winds. Uh, it will grow all over and they look any fruit, uh, any plant look to take over the whole garden you plant okra tomorrows, they do, they produce babies from within, uh, seeds. Uh, and they're not growing that for you to eat. They're growing that to produce more. And so they cover themselves and you go on that, look, I didn't know that was there. You look for cucumbers and so many leaves uh, and squash and they cover everything because uh, Mr. Cube says, baby, I want to rot uh, because I know it must go into the ground first rot and I want to make some baby cubes. That's what I want. And we want to take every bit of the nutrition from everywhere it is. Uh, I just want cubes to germinate. I'm not concerned about oh, a corn. You sow one kernel of corn, and then that uh, kernel produces a, 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 a cob, uh, that there are many kernels of corn on it. And that kernel draws on the corn, says, drop, baby, drop, uh, and the seeds drop, and then you come back at the next, uh, believe me, it will grow, uh, it will lay dormant on the ground. We got seeds that are coming up that we did not even put out there. It will lay dormant during the winter, and when the rain and the sun comes, uh, it will begin to grow. Uh, you think those seeds of the weeds uh, don't even grow in the winter? Are they seeds? Are the weeds that grow in the garden, are they seeds? Uh, do those weeds come up back by seeds? Sure they do. Uh, they flourish and they, the wind blow those seeds that you think you got them all? Oh man, we got all those seeds. Uh, but when you cut it down, you, there were seeds on there. And those seeds says, well, I go in the ground, I can't get up, now it's getting cold. Uh, let me let, lay this warm blanket on me, uh, the blanket of the earth. Uh, but I tell you what, Mr. Farmer, as soon as the weather began to turn warm, we're getting up. And when they get up, they rise up. You think it's one or two, they rise up in the multibus, don't they? They rise up so many that, first of all, it frustrates you. You say, I'm not going to even try to get them up. And all of a sudden, the garden is overgrown Last year, the garden was just a dismal mess. Just overnight, it was overgrown. And those weeds grew tall and they grew strong. And although the goats may go and they eat some down, they get the seeds. And that little poop, that little hard poop of theirs, they are staying balls all through the winter. And them seeds and that little poop, and they just dropping them little round balls all, all, all over that garden. And the seed said, thank you, Mr. Goat, because don't worry, we got the preaching man and you're saved. Don't worry, they coming after us, but we got them. We're going to save our babies. We're going to protect them. And so that little goat eat that up, and he just poop all over that, and you find them growing everywhere. The winds come along and, 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 they, and the seeds draw it out and they just blow them all over the place. 
At a place where but there were no weeds, you find plenty of weeds. Then that's Yisraya. They have been dispersed. They have been put. They have been scattered. They have been dis dispersed to the four ends of the earth. Uh, and we in this damn wicked nation here, we give no credibility to our, uh, to our Achim and our Chukim uh, in other parts of the world. Uh, unless they're from Ghana out of the continent of Africa, they say, well, they are not Yisraya. The ones that are white, unless they're in Britain or Russia or anywhere else, they're not uh, of, their, of their identity, what they call Yisraya. And they're both full of damn lies. They're both full of damn lies. And I don't take it back, Yisraya. Not everyone, if we know that if everyone of the dark hue is not Yisraya, how in the hell can everyone of the white hue be Yisraya? They're liars. They're a piece of lying, can't even support you. And 90% of those that call themselves going back, uh, they're subsisting here. They don't even know how to live together. Why don't five or six of y'all get in a shack, live together, and learn how to love each other? Maybe you'll be ready. Yah's going to have to tear that damn city up. The pagan shrines, the Islamic Muslim damn shrine, he's going to rip it to hell. As Yoko Han said, I saw the renewed Yerushalayim. Ascended from El Sima. That's what I'm looking to see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yosef, he died waiting on the promises, didn't he? But they took his bone back. He said, when you leave this place, take my bones. This is so silly, such a damn silly doctrine. And only silly people buy it. Only silly people. Listen to this. He says, and Yasha set up a sign, a banner for the nations. And shall assemble, he shall asaf, he shall gather, collect the outcasts of the Dachan, those that have been violently pushed aside and thrown down of Yisraya. And he is going to kabatz, he's going to gather, he's going to bring together the disperse of Yehuda, the disperse of Yehuda. From the four, you say what you want to. This is only one corner of the earth. He says from the four corners of the earth. He says from the four corners of the earth. Why would you just be concerned about us here in this country when his nation is scattered abroad? He says from the four corners. Well, that doesn't give us any kind of concretely uh, knowledge as to what shall be. Well, let, let me read this here out of the book of Micaiah or Micah, in the book of Micaiah, chapter 2, verse 12. <clears throat> this is a promise by the mouth of the prophet, the Novi, the Nobi, what Yah says here. Micah, chapter 2, verse 12. Yah says, I will, I will, I will, I will, the word will in our language, in our forefathers' language, hafed, my pleasure. Yah says, I will. He did not say, I will ask Dovita, Yarameha, Mahalaya, Shimri. He says, I will. He did not say, I will ask Benjamin. He said, I will. Yah says, I will, my pleasure, my hafed. My desire, I will. Uh, Yah says, I will, I will not, man. Uh, I will, my power, I will assemble. Uh. Does it say that in your translation? I will assemble. Yah says, I will assemble. Yah says, I will assemble. Yah says, I will assist. Assist. I will assemble. I will gather. I am the one that collects. That's why Yahshua, the parable, he says, uh, let the wheat and the tear grow together. And Yah's going to send the reapers. He's going to send the Melican. And they shall reap the tear. They're going to bundle them up in the hell and set them on the fire of darkness of hell. But Yah says to the Nobi, for the assurance of Yisraya, he said, I will surely, I will gain, yes, a symbol. Oh, Yaakov. Well, who is Yaakov? Was his name not changed to Yisraya? Yeah. Is he not where the promises of the seed of Yisraya come forth? Sure is. That's why Yah did not miss Yah Yahuta. 
When David was king over the throne, I want to teach on the two powerful principles uh, of Yah's kingdom. I'll get it next week. But this I must deal with today. Hallelujah. One writes and say, what about the preparation of the end time? Hell, everything I teach is about preparation. If you understand what the word preparation, kun, azokin, yarabi, I spoke of that kun, to make ready, to prepare, to make sure our minds are not prepared. You think putting back some damn food or something like that, everything I teach is on the preparedness and the readiness for the nation of Israel. Everything. This is a generation that looking for some kind of nabu. I will, I want to bring that out next week. But this must be addressed. Yah said, I will. He did not say the Melachim, he said, I will. Yah says, I will uh, assemble, I will assess, I will gather, I will collect by my own power. He says, Oh, Yaakov, not some, not a few, but all of you. So is not Yehuda a part of Jacob? Was that not his son? Sure it was. Binlamin, those tribes that separated from the house of Yisrael because of their self-righteousness. He said all of you. He said all of Yisrael. These damn liars they pick this one and say, well, we need to go back. Yah says, I'm going to assemble, I'm going to assad all. He did not say an elected few. He said that there is a remnant. There is a branch, there is a shebats. There's a few. He says, I'm going to gather all of you. Not one of you are going to be left. I will assemble all of you, O Yaakov, Kama, Ko, all of you. And Yah gives them great assurance. He says, I will surely. What greater promise can we got? I will surely chabatz, collect, gather who? The remnant, the remnant, the remnant of Yisrael. He said, I will put them together. As the sheep of Bezra, they shall flow with great beauty. I will put them together like that. They will be what? Uh, as the flock in the midst of their fold. And he said, they shall make great noise by the reason of the multitude of men. They're going to rejoice. He's going to assemble his nation. He's going to bring them together, all his nation, every last one of them. Not some, but all of them, Yisraya. He's going to bring them together because he has purposed this in his heart. This is not the mind of man. This is not what man is doing. But Yah says, I have purposed this. And there is nothing that you can do. I have purposed this. He's going to gather his people. He is going to assemble us. He is going to assave us. Hallelujah. He is going to do that. And no doubt about it, Yisrael, no doubt about it. <clears throat> Hallelujah. 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 There's something I want to read from him, 2.12. Hallelujah. Ah, yes. Let me, let me read this. He is going to do it. Your poor mama, don't let them trouble your mind about getting back. You got to get right first. You need to work on getting right with Yah. You need to work on letting the Torah purge you and cleanse you from the filthiness of your flesh and all your spirit. That's what you need to work on. Hallelujah. He's going to assemble his people. That's a fact. That's a fact. He's going to gather us into the place. Well, what place? Well, let me take you on a little experience here then in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 11. This scale, Ezekiel, chapter 11. Hallelujah. I want to begin here. Yes. In verse 15. 
just a few verses here. This is Yah speaking unto Ben Adom. Yes, Kel Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 15. He calls him Son of Man. Min Amin, Son of Man. He talks about his Achim, your brother, thy brother, and thy brother. He said, The men of your kindred, all of them, those that are of your kindred, and all, not some, but again, he uses all, does he not? He says, obey it, all the house of Yisrael. And again, he says, holy, the complete house. That which is scattered abroad, that which you do not even know of. He said, holy. As they are, as they are, they unto whom the inhabitants of Yerushalayim have said, get you far from Yah. Those that are in that land today, are those, are they telling you to get far from Yah? So he said, are they the inhabitants of Yerushalayim? Have they not said, get you away from Omar Yah? Unto us in the land given in possession. Therefore say, thus saith Almighty Yah. Although, 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 although I have cast them far off among the heathens. He has cast us far off. He has cast this nation far off beyond the realm of our ability to comprehend. He said, all that have cast you far off among, a part of the goim, a part of the nations, a part of the heathens, those that have no knowledge of power of Torah. He says, and although I have put, I have scattered, damn it, you scattered us. Hallelujah. And if he scattered us, damn it, he can regard us as well. Hallelujah. This damn stupid generation. I'm the one that has scattered you. Yeah. He is the one that's got to restore his nation. Yeah. These men will pick scripture and convince others to believe it. Those that call themselves Hebrews and they call on a damn Jesus. Damn Jesus Christ. Yeah. They're filled with this damn filthy demon power called Holy Ghost. Yeah. Tell me who loves a ghost, a distant buck body. Tell me, Yisra'ya. I was looking yesterday as the chronology of this word, how it evolved. It doesn't have a damn thing to do with what's right. Yeah. It's this satanic, alluring power that's all a ghost has to do with. And they call themselves Hebrews, calling on a damn Jesus, a, a damn Lord. And they all change their name to a name that is consistent with the Hebraic name. And yet they call on a damn lie. And you telling me to get up out of Bavel? I'm out of Bavel. We are in this world of Bavel, but we're not of it at all. Bavel doesn't control my identity, my walk, my talk. That land over there you call Israel, it is more Bavel than this because it is a corrupt land it is a land of brutal killers too they will oppress the poor babies they will kill them Yah says don't entreat a stranger wrong if the people want to live with among you let them live now but don't oppress them don't do them wrong because you were gay, you were strangers without an inheritance right, so you don't do them wrong. You don't oppress them. And that beastly man over there, that lie, it oppresses those Palestinians. Sure it does. Yah did not have boundaries on the borders of the land and say to the stranger, you cannot come in. A stranger could come in. Those that were, were Gentiles, they could come in. As long as the offering was offered up right, damn it, they could do it. When they kept the feast days, uh, the Shabbat, you didn't work the stranger because he's a slave. Uh, and these wicked dogs, they call themselves Jews. Uh, that's what they're, they're wicked men. Uh, they will work what they call a gay or a stranger. And Yah says in the Torah, you don't work him. Uh, you don't even work your ass. You don't even work your cattle on that day. You see how damn corrupt that is? Uh, Yah says, even those that are your evidence, your, your servants, your slaves, uh, you don't even work them. The feast days come, you give them rest. You give them that same seven day rest, eight days with sukkah. 
when they gather in Yerushalayim. You don't make them work the fields while you rejoice and drink and eat. You let them rest. You let the land rest. You let the coldness of the land. It is the truth. You don't have to bother. Yes, I'm going to fuss. Hallelujah. Yah is fussing. The simplicity of a nation. And if you've got a second grade education, you're going to be impressed with one with a third grade education. You see the little one, you will see and Sipion, she say, uh-uh, you ain't that for advancing me. I can do it. She won't even let me. I got it, Papa. Let me peel the egg for you. No, I got it. Okay. Well, you got, you beat the egg so you got it all broken into little pieces. Get it. And then you're trying to peel the egg and you can't even get the, uh, the shell off. But you got it. And you're trying to get that little, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the egg, trying to eat that off the shell, and then it ain't pat, pat, it's not taste, is it? Nothing like eating eggshells. The most horrible thing to eat. And so in your conception as to who I am, you say, all right, get it for me. And then the whole shell comes off clean with my hand. We put it in Yah's hands, Yisrael. He's going to clean us that we're going to walk through that, the waters of oppression and darkness. And he's going to bring us back. He's going to gather his nation. You can't tell that little poor daughter there in Louisiana living in the, in the quarters of, 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 of New Orleans that's poor as they come. You press her and tell her she can't eat chickens, it's unclean. You damn liar. Well, that's the cheapest thing she can buy. It's not the type of a buzzard or a, or a vulture or a bat. And these liars are telling people that. Well, you must just eat all veggies. You must be a royalist or a vegan. You are a damn liar. Y'all gives us a law. He gives us a dietary law. And these damn bastards tell people that. And this stupid generation think that they're superior in their concept of knowledge because they don't eat meat. You are a damn fool. You want to eat you some lamb, man? Eat some lamb. You want you some fish? Don't eat no catfish now. As long as they got scales and fins, uh, you can eat that. If it got scales and fins, it's going to have gills. Don't worry about it. They tell you, you cannot eat no cow meat. That's Syria. I mean, Sippy would say the moo cow. They tell you, swine meat is better. Yah says you can eat cow's meat. You can eat goat's meat. You can eat lamb's meat. And these damn dirty beasts, uh, they are the agents of hell. They are the sons of Esau. Because Esau, his crime, was mocking Israel. And they mock the Most High, is what they do. You're not supposed to eat meat. There's one that came against me. His mouth is so raggedy. Look, I got a gap in my mouth. <laughs> Y'all see that? His teeth from here to there are gone. And he sits there with this one big tooth and think he is an expert on Torah. That is not even health. I will make me some teeth. I will make me some wooden teeth. That's what they were before they became par parsonant. They made teeth. They were wooden teeth. That's all it was. You'd be surprised how some wood will fit in your mouth well. It is much more... Wonderful for your gums and the synthetic mess that you put in your mouth. They made one teeth. And he got from here. That would look kind of funny, wouldn't it? If I got that big tooth there and all this missing. That, that doesn't look too nice. Then he calls me an occult beast. I wouldn't even mention the dirty beast's name because it's not even worth mentioning his name. I confronted the coward and he could not even talk to me. I said, you are a coward and a liar. You know where I am. Tell me where you are. Again, he says in verse 16, Therefore, Yah says, Although I have cast them far off among the heathens, and although I have scattered, he has put them among, does it say country? Is that C-O-U-N-T-R-Y or T-R-I-E-S? 
So he shall scatter them among them, uh, among, among what the countries? How many countries the United Nations identify? What are 67 countries? That's what they do, Yisra'ya. There are 167 countries. There are 167 countries. Uh, by some accounts, 172. And Yah says, I'll scatter them among the countries, among all the nations. He did not scatter them just to this little section we call, and these liars will create doctrines to accommodate them. Uh, and the simpletons of stupidity of the people buy it. I want you all to raise hell with me, rail against me. Yeah. Call me, email me. I've got answers for you. He says, yet I will be to them as a little sanctuary in all the countries, in the countries where they shall come. Listen now, verse 17. Verse 17. Therefore says, this is what I say, the sovereign one. I will even, I will even, kabat, I will gather you from the people. I will gather you from the nations. I will gather you from the Am or the Goim. I will gather you from the nation. And again, he used the word assemble. I will assemble you out of the countries, out of the air, out of the four quarters of the earth where I have scattered you. And I will give you the land of Israel, I will no fun. I will bestow that upon you because I promise it. He said, I will gather. I'm going to kick the damn dogs out. I'm going to kick the thieves out. I'm going to uproot them. I'm going to rid that verminous uh, pollution in that land. And from the great Nile onto the Euphrates, uh, we're going to have room to flourish and grow. Uh, you're not going to be house upon house. Uh, we're going to labor. Hell, you don't even know how to work. It's amazing that people will write or respond, oh, gardening is easy. I love it. You have for you have never gardened. Man says to me, it's not hard to garden. Huh. He has a foolish concept. Come and work with me a week then. We'll find out. you find out how easy it is. I said to your safety the other day, yes, I said, this, I get... Many messages out here, right here laboring out here, hot, hard, sweaty. We got some creatures out there when they fly on you, they fly on you, you, whoa, you don't even know what hit you. Got some bugs out there when they bite you, they bite. They don't mess around. So I'm coming for you, baby. Sweating like that. Give me some of that blood. They're coming for you. They're coming. Constant harassing. A persistent. And I'm just as persistent as they are. I got you this time. Oh, you got me the other day, but I got your baby now. And I tried to drive it in the ground once I kill it. I stomp it down in the earth that it doesn't rise up again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what Yah says. He's going to gather his people. You poor mother that's listening. You don't even have bread hardly at times. And these liars are telling you to save every dime and they won't assist you in any way. They won't even come and plop a piece of ground for you and put seeds in there for you to just harvest from that. You can put back the nickels and dime. Your situation is not going to be any different. It is so stupid that people believe that. If I find me a better job, if I get from around these people, I know I won't do that. You're going to go around the same people, you're going to, find the, you're going to go around different people and find the same thing there. If I didn't work around them, I would not do what I'm doing. You go find a group that is as corrupt as they are, and they're doing the same thing that that group did. You know, it's just so immature and silly. It's very, very silly. And you're trying to get back to that land and those that are in the land talk so supreme. Uh, and they, they think they have a front row seat with Yah. That, that is so damn silly. It is so silly. Hallelujah. 
Those that the mourners say they're never going to die, I tell you what, they're going to die. It is an appointment by Almighty Yah. They deny the Hamashiach. They don't even keep the Shabbat. And they say they know him. Bus drive out of Chicago, Illinois. I don't, I don't speak lightly of the man's profession. Uh, but we're going to find out if he's going to die. He has four wives. I've seen them. Four now. He's not as healthy as I am. He's not as virile as I am. And if any man say he can handle more than one, he's a damn fool. And what is that like having three other wives, you call them? You got this wife, you got children or them, and she knows or these know what is taking place in there. It is just wicked. Yeah, yeah suffer that. And Limech, I'll teach you only one day. Limech was a wicked man. He was the first one to introduce that lifestyle. Yah did not tell them. He has suffered things. He doesn't want two or three wives. Yoshua's not coming for five brides. He's coming for one bride. He's coming for a woman that is pure and virtuous and set apart. That's what he's coming for. He did not give Adam the, these theories of doctrines uh, that there were many Adams and many uh, Hava. That's a damn lie. He made a man and he made a woman. He made a man and he made a woman. You can take, if you don't believe me, till up a piece of ground, uh, go get one little old plant, one weed, uh, put it in your garden, see how long it takes for it to, to, to produce and reproduce. And that's the fact, Yisraya. We're trying to base the concept upon Yah in a corrupt mind. Well, that can't be 5,000 years silly as hell. That's so damn silly. Stupid generation. Yah says that I'm going to give you the land. I'm going to give the land a promise to Yisrael. And look what they're going to do. When I give you that land in verse 18, and they shall come here, and they shall take away all of the detestable to Abar, the abominable things thereof, and all the abomination thereof from that land. I will give them one heart. I will put a new ruach within you, and I will take the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give them a heart of flesh. And then for sure they're going to keep his statutes and keep his ordinance uh, and to do them and they shall be my people and I will be their Abar. It's coming to that. We're going to keep the commands of Yah. We're going to keep them more of them. We're going to flourish in the land of Yah. We're going to rebuild. Nothing is taking place in that land over there. There are those over there that are oppressed. That those as who children have never known the United States uh, and they want to get back here. They dress like Snoopy Dogg uh, and the hip hop. They listen to the same damn thing uh, you're listening to over here. Your sons are wicked here. They're going to be wicked there. They're dirty beasts here. They're going to be dirty beasts over there. You think changing location is going to make a change? Uh, you got to get that damn stony heart out of you and the wickedness out of you. You let some Macronians, this damnable doctrine of these deceivers, uh, deceive you. And it's just a book where there are many books that we don't know of uh, that even the Torah talks about. Uh, the book of Moshe and all of those. Uh, and there are groups that would deny that. And yet one reads a book, goes to the internet and reads something, and they buy it. That is so silly. I was talking to Oxymion the other day. I said, I don't believe 99% of what this trash on the internet. They will have you. The internet is for one thing to promote and to make money. Yeah. Mr. Zucker didn't have a damn thing but, but an idea and it sold for $5 billion. Are you silly as hell to think uh, that he needs advertisement to pay the stockholders and all of that to make money? And we buy what's off the internet? You got damn fools up there. Tell you to buy this, you buy it. You think it's going to make you better. That's silly as hell. They but one thing that makes us better, and that's the power of prayer. You get consumed with taking this, mixing this damn concoction, and doing that, get your damn wicked heart right. I ain't taking that. Get your damn wicked heart right. He's the bar that heals us. I don't despise the herbs. 
But I don't spend a lot of money in them either. Not me. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. He gives us a law to get stay healthy. To eat right. And that those are every damn thing they see, they buy it. Every little trinket, every little idea. I don't buy that. You look up one article, you got five million documents on how that's confusing. That is Bavel, and this generation is confused. Well, do we go back to the land? Go back to the, go back to Yis, Israel. Go back to Israel. Go back. And let me know when you get there. You're broke. You don't even have a dime. You're on public assistance. How are you going back? And the ones that espouse that they're making these dollars in America. And they can't live in that land of $200,000 for, for the rest of their lives or retire with that little bit of money. There ain't no money in that land. There's no money in that land. You're, you have the portals of the internet here. Go there and look up rental properties in Israel, Yerushalayim. Bethlehem, see what you're going to pay. That fruitcake that came from down here was going there when she realized that that little bit of money you make, you're going to be broke. You're just going to take all that just to pay rent. How are you going to eat? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Moving quickly to the 20th chapter of the same book. Yes, Gail. Yes, Gail, 20. That's one particular verse I really want to read here. I will, I will make up, all right. Yeskel chapter 30, let me read verse 31, 33 first. Yah says, as I live, says Yah, surely with a mighty hand. You understand as he live, Ezekiah chapter 20, verse 33. Chapter 20, verse 33. He says, as I live, says Yah, Surely with a mighty hand, and with a stretch out arm, and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. You understand, Yisraya? This is what Yah is saying. He says, and I will bring you out from among the people. He's talking about his people. He says, I'm going to bring you out from among the people. And I will gather you. Do you all hear that? And I will gather you out of... Uh, the countries, the Iraq, Agan, Agan, it is implicit that his nation uh, is scattered throughout the countries. He said, I will gather you out of the countries uh, where you are scattered, where you are put, uh, where you have been thrown to. He said, where you are scattered. He says this to us for our assurance. He said, with a mighty hand and with a stretch out arm and with fury poured out. He said, and I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And there I will plead to you face to face. Like I pled with your fathers in the wilderness of, of the land of Mizraim. So I will plead with you, says Yah Almighty. He has allowed us, even in this wilderness of darkness, this midbar. Nothing that is recognizable unto Yah. When they tell you the vote of the people count, and yes, what we call the Supreme Council of the land, they send that a damn faggot dog you can marry. And they got these freaks. That's why you got to be careful what you all look at. I don't even read that damn mess. They got these dogs that are not even dogs kissing. And There was a time that it was even a shame for a man to even embrace his wife and kiss her in public. You got two damn butch bull dagger women kissing. You go to that land of what they call Israel, and you got one of the biggest gay pride faggot days. It, it makes Los Angeles Hollywood look like nothing. When I was there in Los Angeles, I said to Art Davis as I was reading, uh, I was reading in one of the local, no, it was USA Today. I was reading the paper that morning, and I saw whereby it was a gay pride day. They had shut down certain parts of the city, listen to me, from Thursday to Sunday. I say for a pack of damn faggots. 
for some damn freaks. Faggots marching around, kissing, dressing like women, uh, and women like men, and they shut down uh, and close out parts of the city. And yet men that are more honorable, yet there's not even a time of consideration uh, for what that man or that mother has done. Why not set it off uh, for those that labor hard uh, and for the Mexicans there that work the damn bean fields? For damn freak. You tell them to take me off. I don't give a damn. Yeah, I'm fussing, my friend. We're so simple and so easily moved from truth. We so easily beguile. The subtlety of men beguile us. You're not going to do anything in, in that land. You're going to get bored. They don't have as the whole turn. Well, I'm quite sure they got most cable networks they have six, seven hundred channels. See how they've confused your mind on that? You got a TV, television, you can get six hundred channels. What do you watch? That's insane. Even the listings, if you list them all, will be a book like that. That's from week to week. How do you, how do you even watch something like that? You see how they confuse your mind? I remember when the days were so easy. We had three channels. And you didn't have much time to watch it. And it was all black and white. And everything signed off at 11. The only time it stayed on late was Friday night. And you got the horror movies. And you did all you could to step until 11. Drink coffee and everything just to stay up. As soon as 11 come, you were asleep. And there were no reruns. If you miss the mommy, you miss it. Silly. This man's supposed to be a mommy rapper. He walks around like this. And everybody terrified of him. Come on, mommy. I can. You can't catch me, boy. Come on. Whenever we. That's how he walked. The blob. A bowl of jello and everybody's running. Ah, ah! There's nothing but the Holy Ghost. That's all it was. Lies. Just the Holy Ghost. As a kid, we watched Casper the Freeling Ghost. He was such a liar. Casper was a damn liar. He was full of lies. We watched Bewitch. She would bewitch everybody. She was a hoe and a liar. They were bewitching our mind. You go to those channels, they call children challenges. Some of the most violence of filthiness there. They got faggots running there. They got faggots kissing faggots. It's wrong, Yisraya. I love the Baptist, but I love your daughters. But I want to tell you something. There's nothing how the world seduce your mind and rob you and draw you under full delusion. That's right, Yah made the man. He gave him the strength to save the house. And any time you step out of that ram, you are in trouble. And that's just a fact. That's a fact. Hallelujah. Let me find something quickly. Look at this account here in the beginning in verse 40 of 20. Let me begin in verse 39. Yes, Kel 20 and 39. As for you, obey at Yisraya, house of Yisraya. This is what Yah says, go you and serve you, everyone his idols. And therefore also, if you will not listen unto me, but pollute you my Kadosh name, no more with your gifts and with your idols. For in my Kadosh here, my mountain, in the mountain of the heights of Yisraya, Yah says, there shall be, there shall be, now listen. In the mountain, in the high place, uh, in the body of Yahshua, there shall be all the house of Yisrael. All of them in the land. They're going to be in his place in the land and they're going to serve me. There will I accept them and there will I require your offerings uh, and the first fruit of your oblation with all the Kados things. Now look at verse 41. Yah says, and I will accept you favorably. He says, with your sweet 
Reach or your sweet fragrance. Yes, scale 2041. He says, when I bring you out. Do you see that? Yah says, I'm going to bring you out from the people. Not that you're going to bring yourself out. He said, I will bring you out from among the people. And I will gather you out of, does it say country or one nation? He said, I will gather you out of the countries. I will gather you out of the countries. Where you have been put scattered abroad. And I will be set apart in you before the heathen. He said, when I bring you to that appointed promise, there shall be a noise that shall rise throughout the nation. I have scattered you. I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to do it. No man is going to do it. It's going to be me and me alone. I'm going to bring you back. I am the one that shall gather you out of the era, out of the out of the out of the countries where you have been scattered. Y'all scattered us. And if he scattered us, he can regroup us. He scattered us, he's gonna restore us. He scattered us abroad, he knows where we are. Not one hair. He has numbered every one of Yisraya. He know he knows where we are, Yisraya. In this damn wicked world today, uh, these little whole houses that think they know Yah, that think their knowledge is supreme, they all say the same thing. You see them on the corner, get that for me. And see, the people are so ignorant, they say the same thing, uh, and they drive the same point. I've been tempted to say, let me just go, I'm going to drive one point. I'm just going, no, 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 let's go back to this one. Let's go back to this word. They become discombobulated. You see these young men, they're just silly. Earrings and everything on. It's not of y'all. I can show you where all that came from. Y'all don't have to buy it. I can show you where it came from. It's in the book. I can show you those, the sons of Ishmael, uh, were the first men to wear stuff like that. Y'all say he's going to put earrings in our ears. Not this damn trash you get from sales or the dollar store. He's going to put the rings on our hands. He, he's going to put the bracelets on your ankles. He's going to do that. That's not, a, that's not even wedding bands. That's not a yah. He didn't ordain that. Even if you do a research on the Hebrew wedding, it was nothing like that. It was nothing, nothing like that. Even when they put on a piece of jewelry, they took it off uh, because it, was, it, it didn't symbolize that. This is all America. The white dresses that women wear, that's all America. That's all European. They were dressed in beautiful colors on that day. Listen to this. He said, I have scattered you and I will set and you will, I will be set apart in you before the heathen. He says your heart will be cleansed by the power of this truth. And the heathens will know it. And then in verse 42, look what he says. And you shall know that I am Almighty Yahweh. See, this is when we're going to know the fullness of all of his great work. When I bring you into the land of Yisrael. When I bring you to the land of Yisrael into the country for the which I lift up my hand to give it to your fathers. He's going to bring us. And he's going to do it because he wants us to say, you're so great. He wants our voices to be heard over the nation. It's not going to be done by, you don't put a mother, a child, a young mother under that kind of strain. Why would you do it like that? You should show her these verses. I'm going to do an in-depth teaching on this. I'm just scratching the service today because I just threw this together this morning, honestly, about 20 minutes before I came here. Why would you put that on someone? Why would you put that on that poor little daughter in Mississippi or that daughter in New York or that one in Los Angeles can't even make it? Who has to catch the bus, never driven anything? Why would you put that on her? Or that young man that's striving to please you that that helps his mother. She doesn't even know ya, but yet he assists her in the responsibilities because he can't find a job, although he's got a college degree, to even pay enough money. You can't even make enough money in this land to go somewhere like that. 
a man like that, a family of four and more to come, uh, it will cause him to live in a lie like that. Come on, they're going to have one bedroom, if that. That fool used to write me from Scotland. That's what he is. He'll hear me say that. Now, I don't even call his name. He lived on the seashore. He had government subsidies. He lived in a house that the closet, he made the closet into a bedroom for his daughter. She could only get up and then go to bed. It was nothing there. It was smaller than a prison cell. And they all slept within the context of a little small place, about six, seven hundred square feet. Just the biggest my little house over there. And you think that in this country, because you folks have these big houses, that this is what consists in the world. You're wrong. It's just not the truth. Yara got a big old fine mansion down there in Jamaica. She got a shack, a room. That's it. She has to work. So how do you put that burden on a bath like that? How do you tell her, save her money, get back to the land, uh, get out of bath, uh, uh, hell, uh, you, you, you just, as the old saying proverbial, you go down a, a draw devil and you come up a wet devil. Uh, you go on, you hear wicked and you go on there and you still go to do wicked. Lee. And because you think you got the right hand of Yah because you're in that land, within those over there, that land should be prospering like no other. And the economy is faltering just like anywhere else. It is a land of killing and they love to kill. They love to fry you and they will fry you. They will bomb the Palestinians, their home. They will drop bombs and kill their babies dead. What Yah is going to do it, then damn it, let Yah do it. I'm not getting no assault rifle and going out here trying to kill Esau. I'm not going out here with no pistol and trying to bring down this government. I will not. The one that I serve is great. He's going to bring it down. It would be a, a misguided approach for me to try to take it down. With this little group here, when the bullets start flying, baby, you're going to run. You're going to save your heart. And so I don't even think like that. I'm not going to even try. I'm not going to promote that. Not at all. We pray for the leaders and pray for the government. For what reason? That you can live a life that is quiet. And Shalom, they don't mess with us here. This government doesn't bother us here. They know we're here. They've told others about us. They don't mess with us. We don't have no inspectors coming out here to make sure we're doing the right. They don't mess with us. Yeah. Period. Oh, you've got at ease in Zion. Well, you're at ease where you are. You're not making no terrific uh, move to get to that land over there. You haven't given up your pork chop sandwiches to get over there. And some of the most heathen, mystic people talk like that. No, I'm not going to put that on your daughter. I know you're poor. I know you don't have a damn penny. I know you don't have no money. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to tell you you must be in your sure Hamashiach. And you must begin to get that filthy house of yours right and clean. Now I'm not going to tell you that. You can afford it over there. Can you afford it where you are? You that, that move around. You live here, you live there. And you find one thing, it's all the same. Well, they got more cultural things there. What in the hell? Are, well, what is that cultural things? It's the same sin. You got faggots in Atlanta just like you got faggots in Charlotte. You got faggot bars in Atlanta just like you got faggot bars in Phoenix. You got stripper joints in Charlotte like you got them in L.A. What damn culture to go to some stupid museum and look at some statues and some books or some silly paintings? You call that culture? I don't want it then. Let me be uncultured. I'd rather go to the woods and bird watch. Yeah, I'd rather go and work in the garden to sweat flows, and when I'm finished, I'm weak. That's culture. I want to make enemies. I'm a warrior. I like making enemies. I'm the enemy of no man. Making sense, my friend? Yes, sir. Verse 43, and there shall you remember your ways and your doings wherein you have been defiled and you shall loathe yourself in your own sight 
for all your evil that you have committed. Yah says, when I take you back, you're going to realize what you have done. We will sing the song, take me back, take me back where I first. Well, he first met us in Abraham. He knew you before you were four. And we're going to come before his presence. See, if you're in the presence of Yah, you will loathe yourself. You will hate your attitude, your spirit. This nation doesn't do that. And those that call themselves Hebrews from beyond, they're not from, from beyond the concept of men. Not at all. And that's just a fact. We are Sugula people. We are special people. Our walk is different. Our look is different. Our beauty is different. Our strength is different. I'm not going out there casting Yah's pearls before the swans. They get that, which is Kadosh, unto the door. I watch these individuals, uh, they trample on them. And they call themselves delivering. So they're not, deli they're not even delivered. They're smoking dope. Uh, they're raping. Uh, oh, someone writes me the other day, uh, well, anytime someone has sex, is that marriage? I say, you know, I, was, I say, you know, you're silly. So I took them to Torah where it says in Yahshua, when, 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 uh, when Miriam and Yosef, uh, that he, he, he thought probably to put her away. He had not gone into her, but that was his wife. So how could you give her a shabikha, or writing a divorcement when you're not even married? And yet that was his wife because she was betrothed unto him. Uh, this is so damn silly. It is so silly. So I guess when a lion meets with the pride, all of them are his wives, huh? Well, the animals do, but I'm not a damn animal. I'm not a lion. I'm not a damn bull, all right? I'm a man. And he made me higher than the bull. I can eat the bull, but the bull sure can't eat me. You understand? Huh? The bull sleep with his daughters. Will you sleep with your daughters? Huh? The bull out there in the field produce a baby, a, a, a heifer. He will sleep with an next year and put another damn baby in. Huh? Will you do that then, jackass? Let's get real. We need strong talk and right talk. We can allow these fools uh, to guide us. Well, the animals do, but I'm not an animal. I'm a man. He didn't make no bull out this image. He made you and me out this image. You, uh, you come from the image man, and you are the image of that man, which is the image of Yah. So I'm not a damn bull. I'm not sleeping with my daughter. She get a certain age, I don't even want to touch her the wrong, wrong way. I love my babies when they get out. I say, say to them, I listen, are you getting, you're growing up too fast for me. So the way I hug you now is a little different than when you were like sippy. So I guess we just keep the babies coming, all right? I have someone to hug until I get old and die. A maturity level is rising up. So yeah, whoa, little girl. You sit on your lap up. No, you just give me a hug. Give Papi a hug. I don't play like that. I'm here to make the devil in you mad. Hallelujah. I'm going to close in a few minutes. Hallelujah. Yes, Kel. What did I just read from? Yes, Gail, 34. Did I read that? Ezekiel, 34. I will, I'm going to teach this in a more precise way. I'll get to what I was going to teach. It's a beautiful message. Yah's will, I will teach it next week. But yes, Gail, Ezekiel, chapter 34. I want to read a couple of verses here quickly. Turn with me. 34. Verse 12. Look at this now. This is Yah. Verse 11, read, let's read this. This is, this is Nabu'ah. This is prophecy for us. Ezekiel 34, verse 11. It says this. For this what Yah says, Behold, I will both search out or search my soon my sheep. Is that what he says? He said, I got to search. So in order for someone to search, one got to look carefully, right? He said, I will search for my sheep and seek them out bokash to secure them to find them he uses the word bokash i will seek them out he says as a shepherd seek out his flock in the day that he has come among his sheep he knows that there are many sheep but there are those that belong to his flock there are those that belong to his flock 
He's in the market. He wants to make sure it takes back his sheep. So as the shepherd goes and search, he says he's going to make us the forager like the sheep of Bozra. You understand? Our wool is going to be fluffy. It's going to be beautiful. I remember the last time Simeon, my ox Simeon, I went to the market up there in, the, in, the, in, in Monroe. I said, let's go home, man. When I saw some of those beautiful sheep and I saw what we brought there, I said, let's go home. That's right. Don't laugh at me. I said, let's go home, man. We don't even wait for the money. Let them smell it. You saw some of the most beautiful sheep. I look at it. Oh, my. Made me full of shame. A lot do you not. Some of those sheep were so beautiful. Those, those lambs, they were just so pretty. They, they, I said, Samuel, they had to wash them a bit. They, they, what they spray on them? It just, that ain't right. Our stuff look haggly. We pulling some in the... We took some in the market the other day which is, uh, the, when you all left our Thursday. We got to pull some of that wool off. It just looked haggly and dirty and dingy. And, and Simeon took the ones down to the market the other day. You know what he came back and told me? Oh, ours look better than all. If ours look better than what was there. I would hate to see what. I'm glad he went that day. I'm glad I didn't take them down there. With those sheep up there, they were just beautiful. I, I mean, just, and they'll buy you back there here. You are going to 3,000, soul. Browse came through. Fifty no, I get fifty get fifty get for what 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 so forty one stop I said let's go on out so I'm not gonna I'm, I'd rather go home and and rest man I'm not waiting for nothing tell them send the check verse twelve as the shepherd seeks out his flock in the day that he is among the sheep that are scattered. We're scattered people. He's going to find us. So will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. I'm going to find them. God's going to find us. The power of that testimony of Yahshua. Let these beasts deny your sure. I've listened to some of those men, they call themselves Torah believers. I say what they teach. If I was going to teach them one concept from the Torah, I would see what the prophets and all said. They just talk. It's nothing that is enlightenment according to Torah. They just talk silly. Hear this. Yah says this, listen, Yisra'ya, and I will. I will bring them out from the people. Well, you are in Babylon. Yah said, I'm going to bring you out. I'm going to bring you out from among the, um, the nations, the people. He said, and gather them from, does it say countries again? Yeah. I'm going to gather them from the countries. And I will bring them to what? Their own land. I'm going to bring them to their own land. To their own. That word, when I see that word countries, and when it talks about countries, it's talking about Erech. But it says the own land, when we define that word land in the Hebrew, it is Adoma, Adoma. It means their land. He said their own land. And feed them upon the high place. I'm going to feed them the riches of the knowledge of Yeshua and the power of the Hamashiach, of Yisrael, and the rivers, and in all the inhabitant places of the country. I will feed them in tough pasture and upon the high mountain of Yisrael. They shall find, they shall, they shall their fold be. And, and there they shall lie in tough fold and in fat pastures. They shall feed upon the mountains of Yisrael. I will feed my flock. I will cause them to lie down, saith Yah. I will cause them to lie down, saith Yah. Yeah, I will seek them, seek that which was lost. And I will bring again that which was driven away. And I will bind up that which was broken. I will strengthen that which was sick. I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. 
As far as for you, O my flock, thus saith Yahweh, are just between cattle and cattle, and between ram and goat. Seem as though it's a small thing unto you to have eaten up the tub pasture, but you must tread down your feet, the residue of your pasture, and you have drunk of the deep waters, but you must foul the residue of your feet. Yah is going to bring us back. He's going to be the one. So you poor mama, you hear these men on the corners, go back to the land. And those on YouTube, I'm telling you, you Yah's going to bring you back. Don't worry. You can't even go there and feed yourself in that land of Yisrael. You can't even do that. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. I've got two more verses I want to read. I'm going to close here in the 36th chapter. And the 24th verse, let me see, Yeskel 26. Yeskel 26, no, that's not what I want. It's amazing because I have all this kind of identified, and this one I preached in this book years ago, 25, 30 years ago. It says here in Ezekiel chapter 36, let me read the verse 24. 23 first. Yah says, I will set apart my great name, which was profane among the heathens, the nation. They call him Jesus and Lord and God. That's a profane name. That's what heathens call him. So you see those on the corner talking about the Christ, the Lord Jesus. They're damn heathens. They're not the sons of Ibram. They're not from beyond. Everybody, the Pope used Jesus. And these folks say, well, they want to argue about the name. Yet there's power in the name. He says, which you have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am almighty, Yah says the Abba, when I shall be set apart in you to their eyes. They will know that I'm the great one. When you trust me and they see the power of this testimony of yours sure, in you, they see you looking just like a damn fool like them. Just like the one called me last night when she's living among people. I said, you need to shut your damn mouth, woman. I can tell just by talking to you, you need to be quiet. I'm not looking for her money. And I want their money. It's, uh, and I know she's listening there. I don't, I'm not trying to offend her. She sent an offering one day and she threw up and said, you know I'm a poor woman. I sent the offering back. I'm not trying to make no damn money. Damn money. I don't live beyond expenditures here. I don't set myself on a pedestal. Uh. I don't have no more riches than you. Uh. Yah says in verse 24, For I will take you. You see what he used here? And in, 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 in Yeskel, where is that? Yeskel 36. Uh. Yah says, For I will take you from among the heathen. He's the one that's going to take us. He's going to take us from among the heathens. Uh. And he said, I will gather you out of all countries. I like that part. Can I ask you a question? Uh, even the wicked, the Melach or the Melachim of you are going to come gather them, are they not? Yeah. Well, what makes you think we, the Sadiq, he's not going to gather us back into the promises of Abraham? Uh? We mess up when we try to move ourselves. He said, I'm going to gather you out of all countries. Uh, I will bring you into your own land. And when I do that, I'm going to sprinkle you clean uh, water upon you. And you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Uh, and I will clean you. Uh, he said, and then you're going to show enough have a new heart. And uh, truly, you're going to have my Torah written in your bosom. One last verse I want to close from. Hallelujah. That was something I want to read. Let me see. What was that? Hallelujah. Yeah, it was in Colossians. It says here when I was talking about the wife, it said, Why submit yourselves unto your own husband as fit in Almighty Yah? So you should submit yourself unto your own husband like you should submit unto Almighty Yah. Oh, don't let T.D. Jakes women, you're loose. Don't worry about that. This homosexual, what he is, all of them. And along was homosexual. And they loved him and still love him. He wouldn't even, he wouldn't even spit on a little crowd like this. This is an insult. Look at this little crowd. If you're over here, you will see the small crowd. And I'm trying to pour out the essence of what he has put in me. I want to labor. A labor is worth of his heart. So I'll be able to sit down and eat. And I'm ready to eat too. Can I read this here in Revelation chapter 14? There's a verse here. Hallelujah. Let me see. 
Hallelujah. That's the verse I wanted to read. He talks about those that have not defiled themselves. And the Milak. Oh, here it is right here. Let me see. Help me, y'all. You see, now who, it says right here, now look right in Revelation 14, 19. It talks about the Milak that shall gather in. 19. And the Milak thrust in his sickle, his sword, into the earth. And gather the vine of the earth. And cast it into the great winepress of Yah, of the wrath of Almighty Yah. And the winepress was trotted without the city, and the blood came of the winepress even to the horse's bridle by the space of a thousand six hundred furloughs. So if the Milak are going to gather the wicked, they're going to gather those that have sinned against Yah, don't you know Yah is going to gather his nation? He's going to bring them to that pointed place of judgment. He's going to gather them for that great day of judgment. He's going to bring them. They're going to take airplanes and nothing like that. You don't need no airplane to get to Jerusalem. You poor mother that sat there cry. You that are in Africa. You that are in the continent of Africa. You that are in Russia. Poor people. You that are in Sweden. You that's in China. They denounce everyone that is not of the Americas. You that are in China. You that are in Vietnam. That in, uh, in Cambodia. All of y'all's people. Your hues are different than my hue. Your skin complexion. Your physical build is different. And yet there's a, there's a tremendous burning of fire love for Torah. Because Yah has put it there. He's going to gather you. He's going to bring you. He's going to bring you. You can't afford to. You eat in grasshoppers and locusts every day for dinner. Because you know it's rich in protein. That's all right to eat a yakaha and they must eat it. I wish I could find some for tabernacle and, and gather me some and just put, put them in a nice bin to feed them some apples and just grill some. I'll eat some of that. And see what it was like. I said to the children, if I get some locusts and, and, and feed them some, some honey apples or something, clean them out real nice. And I said, if I, I take some sea salt and I dip them in honey and sprinkle a little sea salt on them, we all eat them. Said, oh, that sounds We'll eat them. Yeah. I know my boy, he said he'll eat it. Now, our Cleveland, instead of fried chicken, you get some. Grill grasshoppers. How about that? You that are in the nations where you're eating grasshoppers and all of that, he's going to bring you back. You can't even afford to, that mother there in India can't even afford nothing but a piece of plastic. They're sleeping. She's been sleeping on that corner under that plastic for 10 years, that same spot. Don't even have water to bathe and you tell her to go back to that land. That's just as much Babel as this is. You're silly. You need to stop those lies, men. You need to stop oppressing the people of Yah. You're all right. You, you're going to be all right. Yah's going to gather his people. He's the one who's going to bring us back. First of all, he's going to bring us back to the promises of Abraham. He's going to bring us back to the word. And then uh, I tell you, uh, when he would say, Scotty, beam me up. What is that? Lost in space? Scotty would beam him up. When Yah says to the Melachim, beam them up, you're coming up. And that's a fact. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all. May strengthen you all. May heal our and your shield mighty name. May this simple truth uh, open up your heart, your mind. You that wrote the letter, uh, this is just a simple taste. I didn't have time to really look at things, but I will. I, I'm going to teach this. I'm going to teach it with a great precision because I'm going to dismantle that damn lie. It's a lie. If nothing else, dismantling in the minds of you that listen to this broadcast and that will hear this message, that uh, you will understand. He shall gather his people. I want that to be titled, Yah shall gather his people. You don't have to flee. Yah shall gather. You may the riches of Yah rest upon you. Come on, Zakin Yerami. You all send an offering. Send an offering to help us. Send an offering. Don't send it to Walmart this week. Send it here. And Yah will bless you much. Hallelujah. We told Yahweh for that. Truth and simplicity, but yet powerful, Yisrael. You know, it's something how men, they come up with these doctrines and their own way of expressing what they think Torah said, but yet they, it robs the amun out of the people. It puts the, 
as Brad was saying, those that don't have financial uh, substance in a bind. Well, Yahweh, he doesn't do that. That's not what the Torah does. Don't you see how this message, message of sim, slim, simplicity yet encourages your love? It gives you strength. It gives you imuna. It gives you hope. It gives you that substance of things that are hoped for. Even the evidence of things that are not seen. Yahweh, he knows what he's doing in this last hour, Yisrael. He's not going to leave it in the hands or in the minds of mere man to figure it out. But it's going to be revealed by his Ruach and by his Torah, Yisrael. So be strengthened, be encouraged that Yahweh, he shall take care of his sheep. Hallelujah. Those of his pasture. Hallelujah. He shall redeem call all Yisrael. Let us stand to our feet, Yisrael. Hallelujah. That just gives me the strength to want to press on, Yisrael, knowing that Yahweh, he's not leading us wrong, Yisrael. He shall lead us into the past. He shall give us those things which he has promised even from the beginning of the old land. Hallelujah. Uh, but Yahweh, we do tell you for this beautiful Shabbaton, the message. And again, we do ask Yahweh, you will touch those that are sick, sick and that are weak in their bodies. Uh, but Yahweh, you will raise them up by the Torah and by the power of Yahshua HaMashiach. And all things we do, Barak, you take those home, Yahweh, that have come from near and far, those that listen by via of live stream. In Yahshua's precious name, we do pray. Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yahbarak Ko Yisrael. Hallelujah.